we'll get started. Whoa. Move that back a little bit. Everybody's good. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, we want to share some very uh, important information regarding a case that uh, is very near and dear to this department, to this city, and to the community of Denver. I also want to acknowledge uh, many uh, of the agencies and individuals that have uh, helped us along the way with uh, bringing uh, some small sense of closure to the Jahl family. Uh, you'll hear from the mayor, you'll hear from Papadia, but I also want to thank the Denver, Denver District Attorney's Office. I want to thank the ATF, the US Secret Service. I want to thank the Denver Fire Department, our partners at Crime Stoppers, and uh, the executive director for public safety who uh, helped us uh, ensure we had enough resources to uh, bring some uh, closure to this case. Let me start uh, by uh, acknowledging that uh, why we're here, what brought us here. On August 5th of 2020, Jibi, Ajaya, their two-year-old daughter, Khadija, Hassan, her daughter, Hawaii Bay, were killed in an intentional fire in the 5300 block of Truckee Street. Today, we announce that we have arrested three juveniles for this crime. These suspects, two of which are 16, one is 15, were arrested this morning in Jefferson County. They are currently being held for investigation of five counts of first degree murder, five counts of murder in the first degree with extreme indifference, three counts of criminal attempt murder in the first degree with extreme indifference, two counts of first degree assault with extreme indifference, one count of first degree burglary, one count of second degree burglary, three counts of first degree arson, and eight counts of fourth degree arson. Now, due to the ages uh, of our suspects, there is limited information that we can share at this time. But what I can say is that uh, the evidence that we have uncovered, the circumstances and the facts that we have found to this point do not let me repeat, do not indicate that this is a bias-motivated crime. Arresting those who committed uh, this crime was one of the top priorities for the entire safety department. And we worked closely with our partners in order to accomplish this goal. I want to thank our homicide team for their tireless effort on this case. They spent uh, a significant uh, amount of time working to uh, help us bring closure to the Jal family. None of this would be possible without homicide, major crimes, and the partners that I have listed. Today marks a significant day in providing a small sense of relief to the Jal family. Well, we are saddened. We are also thankful that those who allegedly committed this crime were brought to justice and placed in custody. With that said, I'd like to introduce the mayor, Mayor Michael B. Hancock. Thank you, Chief. As far as I can remember, in the 10 years as mayor of the city, this is the first time I've showed up at a DPD press conference following the arrest of uh, suspects in a crime. But this was 
one of the most heinous crimes I've ever seen or witnessed in our city, as mayor or otherwise. And it was also very, uh, hit me to the core. Um, and I was struck by the sense of diligence and commitment and dedication of the men and women of this department, of the ATF, of the Secret Service, of the Arson Division, of our Fire Department, and many of the other law enforcement agencies uh, when this happened, that we would do everything we could, turn over every rock, make sure we looked at every nook and cranny to make sure that this crime was solved. And so, Chief, I'm honored to stand with you today to thank the men and women of this department, in particular, as you mentioned, the Homicide Division and the Major Crimes Division, uh, for the tremendous work uh, that they put in, the many, many, many hours, um, again, turning over every rock to make sure that we solve this crime. I want to once again to extend to the Jaw family, on behalf of this city, our deepest condolences, not only to the Jaw family, but to the Senegalese community, uh, the entire Denver community, for this tragedy that occurred in the life of our community just a little uh, less than six months ago. Today marks the first step uh, to, to making sure we hold those responsible uh, for this crime. Many of us, if not all of us, have wondered to ourselves and out loud who could commit such a crime to such a beautiful family. I want to share with you that I spoke just about an hour ago to the Consulate General who flew out to Denver following this crime, Consulate General the Honorable El Haji, and I share with him, of course, uh, that there was a break in the crime, that arrests have been made. Um, he wanted to express on behalf of the entire Senegalese community his tremendous confidence and gratitude to the Denver Police Department and all the law enforcement agencies that were involved in helping to solve this crime. And we committed to continue to work together, to stand with the African community and to make sure um, that they know that their city will always and will continue to stand with them going forward. And so with that, um, I want to reiterate what Chief Pazin has shared. If anyone has any additional information regarding this crime, we ask you to come forward. And to Crime Stoppers, thank you again for once again perennially being that partner in our city helping us to solve these crimes. Um, it's not over until they are sentenced um, for their crime in this heinous crime in our city. But to the Denver Police Department and all the agencies involved, thank you. The city, the Senegalese community, the Jaw family can breathe a little better, a little easier tonight uh, because you helped us to solve this heinous crime. Thank you, Chief. Now I'll bring up Papadia, the African, the great leader in the African community who has stood and counseled the community and the family during this entire time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you, everybody that show up to this press conference. On behalf of the Joel family and the entire community, today is a great day. And we want to start by expressing our gratitude, our appreciation to the entire Denver police, to Detective Baker, Detective Salas, the mayor office, the governor. And as you know, we are immigrants that came all the way from Africa to seek opportunity in this great nation. It's so sad that uh, part of uh, our community member in that process of seeking opportunities, their life was tragically taken. But to say, nevertheless, in this horrific time, the entire Colorado community embraced us around their arm, show us love, show us support. The day of the crime, the neighbors opened their door. The mayor showed up. The governor was there. We felt the love and the appreciation from the entire community. That tell us this crime happened in isolation and this does not define the great state of Colorado. So just wanted to make sure that's how we feel. We are very appreciative for everybody that supported for the GoFundMe. As you know, when you have an entire family taken away, the process can be difficult. But it was possible 
largely because of the great citizen of the state of Colorado. As you know, this is a case that the Senegalese government is following closely. The president was involved, as the mayor said. The consul general flew in, and we were on the phone. He also expressed his gratitude and appreciation. I was on the phone with Jibril's dad, and I'm here also by, with Jibril's brother, Musa and Abdul, and Jibril's best friend, Usman. And they had a lot of young friends and young people also that were involved in helping. We want to express our gratitude. To the media, you have done an amazing job covering this case because it's been six months. At some point, we lost hope. We were afraid that this could become a cold case. But the media stay on top of it, making sure they bring it up and people knew about it. Just know on behalf of the Joel family, the Senegalese community, and the entire African immigrant community, this has been a rough year. Not just for us, but for all of us because of the pandemic. But on top of that, having to deal with the loss of beautiful people like this. We are grateful, but we're still in pain. Arrest has been made, but we know it's not going to bring these beautiful people back. So our message is, let's embrace one another. Let's love each other. Let's not let horrific crime like this define who we are as a nation and who we could be as a state. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I mentioned earlier that uh, we have three juvenile suspects, so uh, we are going to be limited in what we can share, but at this time we will open up for questions. Deborah? So uh, again, uh, without jeopardizing the integrity of the investigation and the case, and uh, as has been mentioned previously, that uh, now we move to successful prosecution. Uh, we're confident in the Denver District Attorney's Office, but we can't uh, share information other than to indicate that uh, there are no uh, facts that uh, we are aware of at this time that would indicate this is a bias-motivated case. Uh, if something uh, changes, then obviously we can make changes to those types of, of charges. But uh, we are very confident in the investigators' work, the work with our federal partners uh, on this, that uh, we have a good understanding of the hows and the whys on this. We just cannot share at this time because now we move to uh, successful prosecution. Rick? Chief, have you found uh, any involvement of an adult in any way in this case? Um, uh, these are the, the three individuals that we believe are responsible for uh, this horrific crime, uh, a crime that has impacted our entire city, our community. This is a beautiful uh, family that is no longer with us. And uh, the juveniles uh, that we have, uh, we believe, are the ones responsible. Uh, other parts of the case are ongoing, and uh, you know there'll be additional information as it becomes available. Is there a family member of one of the juveniles that you're looking at? Uh, as, as I read off the 22 or 23 charges that I've indicated, uh, the focus right now is on the, the three individuals that are in custody for... Uh, the, the horrific killing of the Shaw family. Chief Davin, this is Katie Eastman over the phone Sorry. with Nine News. Um, I wanted to ask if there's any indication that the, the DA plans to charge these individuals as adults, and if those three, indiv if you believe these three individuals were the three masked suspects in that surveillance photo. Uh, Katie, uh, nice to, to, to hear your voice. Uh, again, we wouldn't comment uh, on the, the district attorney's uh, case now. Uh, we will work closely with them moving forward. Uh, as far as getting into uh, specifics, I'm going to repeat uh, what I stated earlier. We believe that we have the, the three individuals that were responsible for this tragic killing of the Jaw family. Hi, this is Esteban Hernandez over at Denver. Right, this question is for uh, Papa. Can you 
talk a little bit about what this means uh, for the community, uh, the Senegalese community specifically. Do you feel like people can, can sort of breathe a little bit easier? I know there was a lot of concerns about people being targeted. Um, can you provide a little bit more of a reaction about how this helps the, the community? Yeah, thanks for your question. Yes, it is, it is a relief. However, there's, there's still some concern uh, uh, about the crime and especially not knowing the why. Uh, and, uh, and we need to still protect the investigation. Uh, there's still some concern, but I'm going to be working with uh, the detective uh, to continue our great collaboration with the community to put them at ease. Uh, but yeah, there have been some uh, concern, but hopefully this arrest bring a little bit of relief and the continuous effort of collaboration will put them more at ease. Thank you. Chief, this is Gary Broad over at Denver 7 News. I wanted to see if there are uh, any connection with the arrest made with the FBI this morning over at Six and Pearl with this case. No. Everybody heard that? This, this was not related to the Sixth and Pearl uh, arrest. Two separate incidences. Uh, Deborah, you had another one? Uh, I am confident in the work of our uh, investigators and, and federal partners uh, on this. Uh, again, uh, without giving away too many of the, the details, uh, we uh, believe we have the folks that are responsible. And if that expands, we certainly will uh, share that information uh, as it uh, becomes available and as it uh, protects the integrity of a, the ongoing prosecution of the case. Chief, I have a question. Uh, oh, Karen, Markett with EDF for, Karen, um, Karen, hold off one second. We got a question here, and then I'll go to you, Karen. Okay, Jackie. Uh, uh, amazing work by our investigators and our federal partners. Uh, they have uh, done uh, an unbelievable job on this. There was very limited information that we had uh, on this, and. Uh, this was as complex of an investigation uh, as I'm aware of in my entire career. And uh, they did an amazing job. So I, I can't give away uh, the details. This is uh, very sensitive uh, information because uh, successful prosecution is critical in this case. Jackie. Karen, uh, can we go to you on the phone? Yeah, I just had a question about um, if you ruled out a bias-motivated crime, do you have, can you elaborate on what kind of motive there may be behind this or any sort of connection? You also mentioned that it was isolated. Uh, yes, Karen, and, and I hope, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like I'm talking in circles here. Uh, I, I have to uh, point out the fact that successful prosecution, protecting the integrity of the case is paramount as we move into this next phase. Uh, but I can tell you that, uh, again, due to the extensive work by our investigators, our federal partners, uh, the evidence that they have uh, uncovered, that uh, we are very confident uh, today to say that uh, we do not believe that this is a bias-motivated crime. And then I, I add that caveat that uh, if facts change as this uh, investigation and prosecution continues, then we certainly can add that. But uh, based on this very extensive investigation, I am confident in saying that this uh, does not appear to be a bias-motivated crime. But can you elaborate hey, on it? Is, oh, go ahead. Karen, I, Karen, I can't. Oh, just a follow up to that. Go ahead. Go ahead, Karen. Can you elaborate? Can you elaborate on any any type of motive in this case? Uh, not without uh, unnecessarily uh, potentially jeopardizing the case. Hey, this is Connor from Westward. Um, I heard you mention in, in the charges, there were, there were some charges for uh, first-degree assault. Does that mean there was some sort of struggle that occurred before the, the fire was set? Uh, too many details there, uh, Connor. Again, uh, we're not going to get into uh, specifics because of the integrity of the case. And uh, as information, as, as this progresses, uh, there may be opportunities in the future. Good. Uh, looks like Rick here has a question. Hello, 
Arabs were distributed uh, three people in hoodies and masks not too long after this uh, incident took place. Uh, do you believe the three juveniles in custody are the three who were in that uh, picture? Uh, I, uh, we believe that the three individuals that we have in custody are responsible for this horrific crime and uh, getting into specific details is just something that I'm not comfortable doing uh, at this moment. Uh, Chief, uh, Chief, uh, Jeremy, again. Uh, oh, sorry, Jeremy, you go. Uh, yeah, uh, Chief uh, Jeremy Hohole here with Nine News. Um, we, we we're seeing some uh, things in the public record that there may have been an adult arrested in this case. Uh, any any comment on that? Uh, I want to. So, Jeremy, uh, good hearing your voice. Uh, I want to focus on uh, the three individuals that we have in custody that we believe are responsible for this horrific uh, crime, taking the Jal family away from uh, us and uh, our community. Uh, you know, uh, as additional information becomes available, we will share that. And Katie, I think you were up next. I have the same question, no worries. Yes, um, let, let me uh, kind of wrap it up here. Uh, as uh, Papadia indicated, we are thankful that uh, you all, the media, helped uh, keep uh, the community focused on this. Uh, the uh, Crime Stoppers and the significant amount of money they raised uh, for this showed uh, how much this impacted uh, our community, our Denver uh, family, and uh, we really appreciate your help. I would ask that uh, you also recognize how important it is to protect the integrity of the case. By no means are we trying to uh, dodge uh, questions, but uh, as we move into this next phase, it is critical that we have successful prosecution and uh, sharing details as small as they may be, uh, we have to be cognizant of that fact uh, because uh, that's uh, the next important date is uh, trials and uh, you know, convictions. Uh, Lance Hernandez with Channel 7. Quick question. You mentioned the uh, Crime Stoppers rewards. How crucial was that to help you guys piece this together? Uh, and, and maybe Mike Mills was going to ask the same question uh, here in the room. Uh, Lance, uh, our partnership with Crime Stoppers is invaluable. Uh, you know, uh, the fact that uh, Papa Dia, the Senegalese uh, community, uh, the work of, of having rallies at the state capitol, keeping this horrific crime, keeping the Jal family uh, at the forefront of our, our consciousness was critical uh, to, to help us uh, come to some you know, small sense of, of closure for uh, the family. So uh, all of it uh, plays a big part in, in raising awareness and uh, addressing uh, this, uh, you know, senseless, horrific crime uh, that, that uh, we now can say we, we believe we have closure on. Uh, and then uh, we're going to switch to Lance, or I'm sorry, uh, Lance, we just talked to you. Mike? Oh, I'm just wondering, Chief, would you still like Crime Stoppers to offer the reward for additional information around this case. Uh, Mike, thank you. Uh, in, in, uh, I don't know if you heard this on the phone, but media partners, uh, we want to make sure that the, we have successful prosecution. So if there's anybody in our community that has additional information that can help us on this case, we ask that they come forward. Uh, we ask that they continue to utilize uh, Crime Stoppers in helping us uh, to further this case, as well as to help us uh, address uh, cases that we see throughout uh, the Denver metro area. Rick, not getting into any of the details, I want to, uh, you know, one, focus on this was an incredibly complex case. Uh, our investigators, our federal partners uh, deserve uh, a ton of, uh, a ton of kudos for uh, the work that they did in this particular incident. Uh, this is uh, at, at a level that I have not seen in two decades. All right.
Um, this is uh, Esteban again. I just wanted to ask, um, can you provide the, the, the gender of the, the three teenagers? Uh, three males, uh, Esteban, and we're going to wrap it up. Thank you all. We appreciate your, your help on this.